Ja, det ser jeg efter regn. <coughs> Maybe I can encourage somebody. Um, do you need a friend? Then you, what you have to do is be a friend. Find someone that's alone, doesn't have anyone, could be an elderly person, a shut-in, you know. Someone that just needs someone to talk to. Even if you don't talk back, just to sit and listen to them. Because we all go through times like that where we feel so alone. And I you know years ago, I used to volunteer at the nursing home where the, my wife worked. And there was this old man there that uh, he loved to play euchre. So I'd go in a couple times a week. I'd pass water to the people and go in and play cards with them or sit and listen to the old people talk about the old ways and the old days, the way things were and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, it blessed me as much as it did bless them now because I used to just love to sit and listen to the old stories my grandpa used to tell me. He said in the old days, you could go to the grocery store for $5 and fill up your trunk with groceries and stuff. That's a wow. <laughs> Not no days. <laughs> oh. It's like, if you need a friend, or you're tired of being alone, or you just want to be a friend to someone else, get out there and do it, because I'm telling you, it means a lot to them. I know there's nursing homes everywhere. Go be a friend to somebody in a nursing home, someone that's lonely. You would not believe the difference it makes in their lives. I've seen patients' health and stuff improve and everything just from having, you know, someone stopping and talk to them and not trying to talk medical stuff talk about whatever they want to talk about that's the key don't talk about what you want to talk about don't have a preconceived idea when you go into the nursing home you go in you say hi and you sit down make ch chit chat but most of the time the elderly will start a conversation because they like to talk and they have no one to talk to you know I'm not really doing anything too much today. Get my junk heap out of there. <laughs> Taking it easy. And I hope all you mothers out there had a good, really good Mother's Day. sideways so I don't have to look at my neighbor's junkyard. I'll look at my own. <sighs> There's Bandit. He photobombs me almost every time. He was on the swing with me here. Yes, I'm teetering on the swing. I'm just going to have to deal with it. I love the swing and I can't sit still. <laughs> One of these times when I'm doing the walks and the talks, I hope that wildlife comes out when I get it on camera. But this section of woods that you're looking at here, there's a lot of animals, deer that come up. But you see right back, right there, there's a guy that he has a camper over there, and then over on this side of this tree. He's got a garage over there. 
that he uses for storing his whatever in there. Well, he's very rarely up here. He comes up for Memorial Day and Labor Day sometimes. Nice people. But in between our two houses here, there's supposed to be a road that runs all along, right the edge of my property line. And the road never got put in. Praise the Lord. And about 300 foot straight back there, over towards this stump, this one right here, go that direction, about 300 foot back or less, there's a road. And then about 50 foot from that is Bear Creek. I don't even believe it's 300 foot, it's less than that. Maybe 150 foot behind me, I'm not sure. The sun just started coming out, so there's not a lot of wildlife singing and bird singing and squirrels yelling like the usual. Well, look at, can you see in the trees all that fresh green growth? It's so pretty when the, when the stuff comes out this time of year because the green is really bright, almost like a iridescent, not iridescent, what you gonna call it? Like fluorescent, bright, bright green where it shows up in photography and stuff really good. And I just love when the sunlight comes through the leaves. It's like it illuminates them. I'm not so crazy about summer. I really don't like spring either. I like winter and fall. <laughs> There's no bugs or nothing. See over there where Bandit is? I don't know if I can zoom in there or not. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting I can do that. See that bucket hanging on the tree? Well, that's a maple tree. I was going to try and collect sap from it. But I guess it's the wrong kind of tree. So the bucket just hangs there because I went and put the hole in it. And <laughs> it's going to be removed anyway eventually, so it didn't bother me, but I got a half-inch copper pipe I put in it. <laughs> so I leave my bucket hanging there, and the bucket has a hole in it, so <laughs> maybe I'll put flowers or something in it someday. I'm thinking about trying to um, put some seeds in the ground today, but I don't know. It depends on how things go with my wife and stuff. And I just started putting the... Um, I gave her some the other day to test it out, but I took some Moringa powder and I mixed it in our coffee grounds. And you know when you do that, you can't even taste it. I mean, maybe a slight tinge, but she doesn't even notice it. And her first cup of the coffee in the morning, I make in my um, little single coffee maker. We each get a cup of coffee with Moringa in it. And I, I put Moringa in it the other day. And um, she didn't have... Um, the accidents and stuff, and uh, she was actually up um, doing stuff, puttering around in the house, and she hasn't done that in months, people. I mean, ha or like years. I've been doing everything. I do other cooking and cleaning and anything that gets done. <laughs> she can't. Um, well, I always have been. But... <clears throat> I think it's really, it's promising. 
So I'm going to start giving it to her every day. And I did tell her, though, that it was in there. And she said, I didn't even taste it. I said, yeah, I know. Isn't it cool? I take a little jar and I put, like, three or four um, pots worth, you know, whatever, what you'd use in a pot of coffee. I put enough in there for about four pots. And then I put, like, four doses of the Moringa powder in there. Enough for, for like four servings. And I mix it right in the coffee grounds. And it's, it's, Moringa powder is so fine, it like sticks to the coffee grounds. Well, then I got, with my Keurig, I got this little, <clears throat> little thing in that you can um, make single cups of coffee. And you put it in your own coffee in it. I forget what they call them. The cafe things or whatever, the little brown jobbies. And um, I put it in there, and it works just fine. And then also, I took some uh, tea bags to make tea. I took the moringa, and I put it in with the tea, and I mixed it up, and then put it in there too. And that really works good also. So that's an idea of anybody that's out there trying to find ways to take moringa and not have the nasty taste. You know, because me, it doesn't bother me, but I just put it in my scrambled eggs and stuff. You know, it's hard to get it to mix in, but it will. And then I put it in my, um, that quiche recipe that I made. Actually, a frittata. They call it a quiche because it's kind of sort of like that, but doesn't have a crust. Um, I did. I don't can't remember if I did in that video or not. But usually when I make it, I put moringa in there too, and you can't even taste it. It's like it's spinach or something. It goes really good with frittatas. I make like a 13 by 9 pan, and we eat on it for like three, four days with that recipe that I showed in the video. I just add like. Um, Oh, I think it was a tablespoon or a couple tablespoons of the moringa powder to it. And you can't taste it. I'm sure there's somebody out there that will find a way to taste it. <laughs> but when you're trying to do something healthy for yourself and you can get it down easier that way, I'm all for it. I really like the moringa. It, uh, it worked wonders for my um, RA and my back and stuff. It's it's almost to the point now, like I don't even have it anymore. I mean, it's there and I, I can feel it, but it's nothing like it was, especially in my hands and stuff. Oh. Get RA in your hands and you'll know what I mean. I mean, your hands, especially when you're a guy, well, a woman too, you use your hands all the time for everything. Even children do. And what I like about Moringa is it's not a drug, it's a food. Yay, yay! So I'll let you all go back to your life now and do whatever you were doing. I just wanted to make sure I made a video for today. Oh, let's look. Can you see the sun peeking through the pine trees up there? It is so pretty. <laughs> Remember, everybody, whatever you do in life, make a difference. And remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. And until next time, bye. Coming up there. A couple of really big hawks flying around. One day I was walking out here, a bald eagle went over, and I thought it was somebody with a hand glider. It was so big. Look at the sky. It started out so awful looking. It was all gray and blocky. And now it's nice and blue. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of elderly parents that sit in their homes every day 
wonder what their children are doing. Because at one time, you were the center of their world. And you know what? You still are. There's nothing I hate worse. I'm glad to see my parents or any old person and they, they sit and they start to cry after a while. Because uh, the ones that they put so much love into, and so much time into, don't put any time into them. It's like, you know, you're old, hurry up and die so we can get on with our life. But they don't realize what they're missing out on. You know, I know we all get busy with our lives and our own problems and stuff, but I really do believe that each and every one of us could do a lot better than we do. You know, that's all of us, including myself. You know, think about it. A lot of times it's caused by maybe the parents weren't the most perfect parents when you're growing up. But unfortunately, parenting doesn't come with a manual. Most of those books and stuff about parenthood are written by people that have never been a parent and never had to live in the real world with real problems. You can't go by book learning. It's like we used to see that all the time in the nursing field. You get these people that come from nursing school and they're, they have book learning, but they don't have real life experience. There's a difference. Nobody's perfect. It's like your children could tell you stories about how you screwed up raising them when they were little, if they were honest and weren't afraid to tell you. Started planting the garden. Got my green beans in. Some lettuce. Uh, leaf lettuce. The radishes so far. We got all this to do yet. And then all the other side there. Blue light green beans, leaf lettuce, variety mixed radishes, purple, red, orange, white, that's what I see, two rows of red beets, a row of, one row of California Wonder green peppers. I did a row of Lisbon onions on this side. I might squeeze one more row in of something here. I'm doing this so when all these papers blow off, I can remember what was planted here. A row, one row of pickles here. Full size pickles, not the little ones. You can see them there. I call them munchers. But they look like big ones. I hope they are. I don't care as long as I can can them. And then two rows of the Crimson Sweets watermelons over there too. And the rest is going to be for my tomatoes and whatever else I think I have to put in there. I got to plant, oh, Tessie seeds got to go someplace that she sent me. So. I'll be farting around more yet, but at least I got the garden in today. Had to take advantage of the sunshine. <laughs> Took a risk. And I planted my, I believe that's buttercup squash. It's one of the squashes. I can't remember because my sticks I had, I lost. And it's grown 
going away, so I want to get it outside. And then this is another squash. The leaves were starting to turn brown and stuff, so I couldn't wait. I got it outside. Oh, that's why I am so far. <laughs>